Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you are joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark but not for long as you're joining me for Dan Brown's great big land life adventure holiday. Well, basically I just went to my dad's house while he was away on actual holiday to look after his cat and rabbit. Anyway, I hope you like scenery, I hope you like the countryside, I hope you like Wales and ruins and all sorts of stuff because my goodness me, it's a beautiful part of the world, not too far from here. I suppose we should start the footage right now. Okay, so here we are on day one of my big land life holiday. We're currently walking out of Marford down Pistol Hill. If you can see this ridiculous contraption over my shoulder here, I had to nip into Wrexham this morning to get a new tripod and a selfie stick, believe it or not. Typical, as soon as I start filming, we get the first car of the of the walk. You can see in the distance there, we've got the absolutely beautiful sight of the Cheshire Plains. And yeah, as I was saying, so I had to go into Wrexham this morning, get a new tripod and something to hold my phone on it, as in the mayhem of the last few days and sickness and all the rest of it, I managed to come out to Marford with the intention of doing a lot of filming this week without anything to actually hold my phone to film with. So that was a good start. That was the first £24.49 spent and let's hope it's uh, some of the last. So my friends, we're somewhere that I really wanted to show you, the remains of Hoseley Hall, which as you can see is not looking too clever these days, but there's air raid shelters, there's all sorts out here in the woods. It's a fascinating place that I discovered totally by accident. Now I don't know if you can tell, but this in front of us is a little mound in the ground. And this is literally an air raid shelter. Right, I've got to be very careful going down these steps as they're all slanted forwards. I've got the light balance on the camera up really high so the image quality might dip here. So my friends, you've probably gathered why I love it here and it is just because these ruins really are like stepping into some sort of post-apocalyptic world. Absolutely love it here. Okay, it's about 20 past six in the evening now and we are down at Marford Quarry, which is basically a disused quarry that's now steadily turning into an absolutely beautiful bit of woodland and just a lovely sort of nature park. Random fact for you here, I once upon a time came down this bank behind me on a mountain board and, well, ended up scraping along the floor on my back at the bottom. Classic Dan Brown moment there. Okay, so these are the sorts of areas of Marford Quarry that I really like where basically it just becomes ever more like being in the Blair Witch Project. And although there's no specific path here, and you can see there's an awful lot of debris on the ground that makes it difficult to walk through, and certainly I wouldn't want to fetch a bike through these particular parts, but because there's so much space between these trees, it's easy to sort of filter through This is one of my favourite places in the world, I would say. The little tiny duck ponds in the village of Gressford. Literally got houses going right up to it. It's that much a part of the village. And it's just like something from 70 years ago. Absolutely lovely. 
Oh, I suppose, yeah, I should show you Merle and the cat here, that one of the reasons we're all out here in the first place, going about his business, eating grass and all the rest of it. Um, and of course, I can't forget our supporting cast. Oh, what a lovely little rabbit. Anyway, um, let's get back to the video. I want you to see this bike that I've been riding. So we're out here on another beautiful day. I've just been riding a bike around all over the place and I just thought I'd stop to well, just enjoy this sight again, looking over Cheshire here in the background. Not sure if maybe Beeston Castle or something is in the distance on the end hill. I'll have to look that up and I'll flash it on the screen now, probably saying, no, I am completely and utterly wrong. Seems a bit close for Beeston, I'm already doubting myself. But the important thing is, look at how beautiful it is here. And more importantly, for comedy's sake, you need to see the bike that I'm riding today. <laughs> Yes, my friends, not only are we riding an Apollo Highway, we're riding an Apollo Highway with a child seat on the back. Um, it's a heavy bike to begin with, but I honestly can't explain to you with the added bulk of all of the child seat stuff on it. It's an extraordinary amount of weight compared to what I've been used to riding a carbon frame for the last uh, couple of months. So yeah, it's a... It's a shock to the system and the old legs, I'll say that. I'd almost forgotten how nice the flash is. I mean, how wonderful is this? Yet again, with so much in this area, there's just this beautiful lake known as the Flash, just dumped here in the middle of the countryside and only a matter of minutes away on the old bike and child seat from it being here. Anyway, it's surprisingly warm. The sun is coming out and uh, I've got the world's heaviest bike to go. I think we'll head back in that direction. Don't want to head out of town too much and then end up not knowing where I am and having to carry five tons of metal with me. Okay then, so hedgehogs aside, I wanted on this particular day to get some decent footage from one of my little cycling routes that I like to do when I go out and stop in this area, and to go down Marford Hill into the Cheshire Plains, so you could see all of the wonderful old buildings here on the left, but this trip was somewhat spoiled by the fact there was all these roadworks going on. So here, just on the way into Rosset, which is again another absolutely lovely little village, we've got the old mill here, this has been knocking around since 1661, what an absolutely amazing little building that is, although judging by how much that's leaning, it certainly looks like it's been around since the 1600s. Now, something that I completely and utterly forgot about was just how similar a lot of this sort of area looks. As many of you know from my videos, there's loads of wonderful countryside around where I live. But in this area, on this, as you're ent entering into Cheshire, because you've got these just huge expanses of really flat land, whereas I'm used to being from slightly more hilly surroundings, they have a lot, a lot of straight roads because they're not trying to carve around hillsides and stuff like that. And my goodness me, I got myself completely and utterly lost. You'll actually see me take the bike onto a grass verge at some point. Again, you're seeing in these clips just how many different sections of pure straight roads that I found. But you'll see me pull the bike on the grass verge in a minute so that I can actually take a look at my phone and get my bearings because I literally got myself completely and utterly lost to the extent of 
well, well, I literally don't know what I'm doing or where I am, so I don't want to add more and more miles onto this trip. But yeah, um, as you can see, it's a, a very nice little uh, trip out, and we actually had a bit of blue sky start to emerge, but didn't really get to much in the end, as you can see here, once again, back to good old grey skies. It's been a, a strange old day today, really. I've only been out very quickly at one point, just to get a few supplies from the shop nearby. I've written a couple of posts here for the website. We've got one about starting my N-Gage railway layout. So there's the picture of my my old layout that I was building back on dry land. Flipping heck, it, honestly, it was absolutely heartbreaking to take that apart. You can see, like, just in that single photo, how much stuff there was and all these cardboard buildings built by hand and stuff. A lot of work and time and... Sadly, a lot of money went into that, and then it all had to be taken apart. Bad times. But when you then look at the other post, I think that being able to live like that and go boating through places like that, it more than makes up for the loss of the original railway layout. Um, but yeah, it's been a strange day just actually being sat inside for the first time for a while. Just writing, I've done few bits of video editing and stuff, just getting a few things in order. Okay, so my friends come out from Oswald Street today and we're back in Horsley Hall and it's just, it really is amazing and it's great to fetch somebody who's never seen it before to see, well, again, just the things that they particularly highlight and notice. But yeah, I mean, I just absolutely love this place. Probably not the sensible, uh, ist idea to be here underneath crumbling buildings, but don't try this at home. <laughs> Right then, my friends, I'm going to try and not look directly at the light because it's ruining my night vision. And basically, I'm out somewhere on the outskirts of Marford. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where if you put a map in front of me now. But I'm under an absolutely beautiful clear sky. No moon up, so really dark and not too much light pollution in our immediate vicinity for a couple of miles. And it's, it's just beautiful up there. And basically, we're out looking for meteors. Um, side note here, you won't believe this unless I show you, but because I forgot my belt on this little holiday, I am actually currently wearing a USB cable tied up to uh, suspend my trousers in an orderly fashion. Anyway, let's move on very quickly from that. We have uh, certainly now entered into the twilight zone, my friends, as you can see, we've got classic crops getting higher and higher. If I lift the camera up, you can see twinkling lights in the distance looking over the Cheshire Plains. And, well, what you can't see is anything in the sky above, sadly. That's a, that's a camera purchase for about 15 years from now when I've saved up. <laughs> My goodness me, this is definitely uh, taking me back to the old days on Narrowboat Tilly down at Whitchurch wandering through these fields, or fields like this, in the middle of the night. Ooh, just uh, chill down my spine, literally now here, which is not a good sign. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep my eyes up in the sky and hope for something less scary. Well, my friends, I think that just wraps up my little land life holiday to Gress for the Marford. Hope you've enjoyed tagging along for some of the sights and sounds of me just doing what I do, wandering around in the countryside. And well, please do consider subscribing and checking out my hundreds of narrowboat life videos on this channel. Please do like the Facebook page and all that sort of stuff. And of course, if you really want to help me out and you're really interested, please do take a look at my short books about life on board a narrowboat, available for the Kindle and as a paperback collection. Until the next time, my friends, though, keep it interesting, keep it whales-worthy, keep it boat-worthy, have a fantastic day, and of course, farewell.